And so uh, we are thankful for this opportunity. Let's pray and ask God to help us as we unfold the text and then apply it. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit that this text might come alive in our hearts and that we might live it to your glory and the benefit of many, that this text would come alive in the days ahead when such thanksgiving will be needed and uh, not only in the life of the church but in the life of this nation lord we ask that we would be people of thanksgiving in this particular way and that this would lift up the name of christ and it is in his name that we pray amen so according to what i've heard and read recently um, <clears throat> The secular world, or the world outside of the church, understands that a proper celebration of Thanksgiving is a time to highlight such things as family. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we, we want to highlight family indeed. Uh, eating and drinking, I see that in uh, some of the ads and as people hustle by, um, uh, lots of beverages, heading off uh, for home to celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, some are thankful for political achievements, others are kind of excited for the sports, and um, nothing entirely wrong with uh, enjoying each other at this time of the year. Um, now, a proper celebration of Thanksgiving for Christians, what does that entail? Well, it can involve um, highlighting such things as family as well. Yeah, we can, we enjoy one another as family gathers, certainly nothing wrong with that. We. As Pastor Joel pointed out in his prayer, hey, salvation from the Lord Jesus Christ, from the hand of God uh, to the people of God, we have a salvation which we can experience now and also in the final sense when Jesus shall come. And deliverance from troubles, we can be thankful for that. Healing of body, we can be thankful for that kind of intervention from God into our lives and uh, perhaps one has a new job, we're thankful for that. What God has given us in terms of possessions, we can be thankful for that. But there's a component here tonight I want to touch on that Paul highlights not only here, but in other places in the New Testament that uh, there is, uh, Jesus spoke about it, John did, the Apostle John. And uh, so we want to take a note of this. At this time of the year, at this celebration, Oh God, remind us that an important element of thanksgiving involves this, thanking God for other believers in the local church and abroad. This is something we may not think of often, but it is a part of the Christian experience. This being Thanksgiving time of the year, it's helpful to remind one another of these kinds of things. Thanking God for the people in the body of Christ right around us. Now let's take a look at this. Here's the question we want to ask of the text. Uh, why should this element be included? Uh, why should we be thankful uh, for the people around us in our local church? Well, there are three reasons. And uh, isn't that amazing? It always turns out to be at least three or 30. Uh, tonight we'll only do three. Why should this element be included? A uh, very important element. We'll take a look at it and then apply it a little later on in our prayer time. And then the offering will be taken. So why should we do it? Notice this. Paul writes this. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, sisters. Uh, we ought always. The language in the Greek text is clear. Uh, we ought and always combine to the word obligation. So why should we include this element of thanking God for the people around us in the body of Christ? Why should we do that? Well, it's an obligation. It's not an option, it's an obligation. We ought always to give thanks to God for you brothers. It is obligatory. So one of the immediate applications of all this is to take the church directory in particular and to take uh, the countries under persecution as well, line them up, people we know uh, overseas, um, in northern Nigeria perhaps, who are 
uh, coming under the gun regularly and uh, thanking God for these people around us. Read the names. God, help me to be thankful for fill in the blank. Uh, I could go around this room and I know you people really well and and uh, most of you and I can say and point to you and say, I thank God for this that God is doing in you through you. So take the directory, get familiar with it, and pray for the people. Oh God, may they be encouraged. And uh, give me a heart of thanksgiving for what these people are doing. Give me a heart of thanksgiving for their, their service. Oh God, help me to thank you legitimately for what these people are contributing to the ministry of the gospel and in different ways, of course. Think about our brothers and sisters overseas. For instance, we, we may be thankful uh, for our brothers and sisters in northern Nigeria who are facing much, and we know some of them by name. And we can thank God for Reverend Alta and Grace, uh, Reverend Kogo and Saadi. Thank you for uh, Reverend Umaro's family, etc. Those are just examples. We can thank God for these people, even those, uh, I see some of the students here today, we can say students, uh, we thank God for you Christian students who are serving God abroad in different universities and so on. We thank God for you for your uh, service. So this is an obligation. That's why we include it. The second thing, notice this, we ought always to give thanks to God for you brothers, implied sisters, as is right. And the text again is very clear on this. Paul is saying that uh, by shouldering the obligation of thanking God for the people around us, this is a wonderful thing. It's right. It is the right thing to do by the power of God and to his glory. It's right and the benefit of many. It is not only a, a good obligation, but it is the right thing to do. It is no more than a believer deserves. No more than a believer deserves in the local body of Christ for someone to be thankful for another and say, God, thank you for fill in the blank. This person whom you have saved and brought into this fellowship so that your name might be exalted and people might know Christ in the community and abroad. You know, we live in a culture that is a culture of envy it's a culture of jealousy and autonomy. You know, me first, I'm my own, uh, <clears throat> I am my own captain. And uh, self-sufficiency, this culture encourages people, all people, believers included, to see such an obligation as something harmful or a denial of personal rights. Um, our culture gives us the right to critique everything. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Boring, boring, boring. Where is the thanksgiving that comes? And it's, it's here. I see it, and I see it in other churches, but in the evangelical world in general. Where is this passion to shoulder the obligation of praying for and thanking God for people around us? Where's that obligation? And uh, in, in general, where, where is it? It's in particular, but where is that general uh, obligation? And it's a right, it, it is a right thing to do. It must be done. It is done to the honor and glory. When this happens, God is honored. So how do we apply that? Immediately pray that this perspective would increasingly be seen as something right to do before God by the power of the Spirit. So why should this element of thanking God for other believers be included in the church? Now, there's the first thing. It's an obligation. It should be always, as Paul writes, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, sisters. And then Paul says it is right. So why should we do it? It's an obligation and it's right. Lastly, and this is, this is where Paul may shock us a little bit. He, he says we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right because. And there are a couple of reasons associated with this. And the third word is, why should we do this? It's an obligation, it's right, and it's encouraging. Note this, Paul writes, because your faith, Thessalonians, 
is growing abundantly. Think of that um, uh, weed in your lawn. I rather like weeds. I like mowing them. It gives me a sense of power, I think. So you think of those weeds that when they, when they take hold, they just grow. One day you've, you have mowed the lawn, the next day you come out and it's all yellow. <laughs> what happened there? This is the kind of growth that is implied in the Greek word here. Abundant growth. So here you have it. Um, Paul says, because your faith or your trust in God, to the Thessalonians, is growing abundantly and because the love or sacrificial love, putting people, other people before oneself, the sacrificial love of every one of you for another is increasing. So the verb to increase means that, again, it's multiplying. So what Paul is seeing is the trust in God in the face of the troubles of the first century uh, surrounding the church, all that, that trouble that's going on, they are responding well. They're trusting in God. They're, they're believing in his promises. And so that is a wonderful thing. And also their love for each other, sacrificial love. One has a need, the other one's there, blessing them, praying for them, serving them. This begins in the local church and spreads out all around the place. So notice this. Therefore, in verse 4, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. So notice this. Paul is blessed by the love and the faith in the Thessalonican church and then he tells other people about it, and they're blessed too. So often in the Western culture, what we hear about our church fights, and uh, we, or a few of us have heard about these lately, church fights, and people arguing about stupid things, and not the cross, of course, because that would be, that'd be just real spirituality. You don't want to do that. We want to get into nonsense. But just imagine what the church would be like and focused in the West if it was about honoring God by pointing out the love and the trust in the brothers and sisters around us. Think of why should this element be included? Because it honors God. It's an obligation, it's right, and it's encouraging. Can you imagine what the church would be like if this took hold? And we found ourselves praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ more and more and more. And we found ourselves delighting in what they're doing by the power of the Holy Spirit and passing that on. Pray, therefore, that our faith and love might grow and that God might be honored through this growth. Imagine what the Western Church would be like if love and faith or trust in God and all his promises, if sacrificial love just took hold of the church and the reputation spread all over the nation and perhaps all around the world. We pray, therefore, for reformation and revival. And the love of God, and the fellowship, of the people of God centered in worship of God would be known all over the place. Love and trust are intimately associated with God-honoring worship. So here you have it. Why should this element be included? Because it's an obligation, it's a right, and it's encouraging. And think, as you pray during our time of uh, Thanksgiving prayer, think about what the church would be like if this was common. If we were truly thankful for other believers and what the outcomes might be thankful for their ministries, thankful for their tasks in the name of Jesus, and those can vary. All the way from, from the nursery, cleaning the church, uh, teaching Sunday school, preaching, teaching in other areas, throughout the week witnessing to friends and neighbors and co-workers, um, uh, praying for uh, missionaries overseas, engaging 
in uh, food shelf ministries here and there, soup kitchen, whatever the case is, uh, biblical counseling, all of those things, just so many things to consider. Thanking God for the service of the people of God to the glory of God. What would that do to our hearts? True thanksgiving, proper thanksgiving, includes this. So let us be about this afresh. I know I need a shot of this. I'm sure we all do. God help us in this regard. So in a moment, we're going to be praying. We'll take some, some testimonies and, and, uh, from people in a moment. And um, after we sing, and um, we will pray and pray for the offering that will be taken. And then we'll have Pastor Joel come and close us out. But the